Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with the one and only, the superstar himself, Sean O'Hagan. Sean, what's happening, brother? You good? Do you know, I'm absolutely marvellous. I'm keeping my in good shape, as you can see. Uh, boxing's going well. And we're, uh, we're here tonight with Will Allison, the role of the sports, uh, I think, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, solid. We're actually in the interview, so you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did <laughs> sit in on it, so you have sports for him, yeah. Thought I'd seen you somewhere before. <laughs> and uh, just doing a bit, of, a bit of chilling time now, waiting for Jack Bateson to go on. Um, fight I've been looking forward to for a while, so yeah. Talk to me about Will then, like I said, we, we, just a quick one, because we did speak in the interview with him and stuff like that, but how good can this kid be? You know, so a good, good, solid, mature performance, and I think he's a kid that uh, nobody's really taking serious. He came along to the gym and he pestered me life out, to come and train with us. And I thought, somebody who shows that much determination and commitment, you've got to give him a shot, haven't you? And uh, tonight I think he's shown us that he's certainly got something there that we can work with, you know. Josh, your boy Josh was here, Josh Wellington. Um, what's next for him? I spoke to him, he seems eager to get to the States and fight somebody out in the States, whether it be a Leo Santa Cruz or somebody out there to, to bring that travel and support. He said he's done it domestically, although we do have Lee Wood, McConnell and Kid Galahad and Jazza Dickens here in his division domestically. It seems like I got the idea that Josh is done with this domestic scene. He wants to get over to the States. Is, is that the sort of vibe that you get as well? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's no disrespect to any of the fighters, but we've, we've boxed Galahad three times now. Regardless of what it was for, we've boxed him three times, we've beat him three times. He's put to bed, he's history. I mean, you've got Jazza Dickens that... I like Jazza. But I think, you know, there's bigger fights out there for Josh. Lee Wood, they're all going on about him being a big puncher. I like Lee, he's a lovely kid. But, you know, I think... Um, when a fighter wins a belt, he does so much so home, doesn't it? And, you know, Lee's been very, very respectful, so I'm going to be respectful. I think we'll leave that one. And we'll move on to it. Okay, I don't, I don't say bigger fights because it sounds like I'm being disrespectful, you know, and I'm not. I'm really not. It's not. It's the US, it's the US debut for George. I think that's that, that's kind of like his 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 feeling towards what he wants for his career. Yeah, I think he's six every domestic box over there. I mean, we fought Ellen Road, we fought Edinburgh Stadium, and I think now all he wants to do is fight abroad, whether that be uh, in Las Vegas or Madison Square Garden. Oh, basically anywhere in America, you know, I think it'd be just uh, another box that he wants to take in his career. Leo Santa Cruz? Leo Santa Cruz, I mean, I like Leo as well, you know, all these fighters I'm mentioning, I'm fans of. Um, and Leo Santa Cruz, I think it'd be a smashing fight, another volume puncher. Uh, back at the weight that he should be fighting at, I think it'd make a fantastic fight. It's a good fight for Josh. Well, Josh has that, that loss and that draw. He's, he's had two fights. He's not in the wing column yet. Uh, Leo Santa Cruz lost that fight against Javonte Davis at a, a, a heavier weight. For, for both, both Josh and Leo Santa Cruz, it seems that like it's it's a great fight to get back in that wing column and stamp your authority in that featherweight division. So, for me, it makes sense looking at the two fighters. Does it make obviously it makes sense for you to make Josh and Leo Santa Cruz next? I think it makes uh, absolutely perfect sense. Josh and Santa Cruz, I mean, both good fighters. They're both um, far, far from being done. You know, sometimes fighters take a little uh, a little risk and it don't go the way that they want it to. But I think it's a cracking fight. I think two fighters that have still, I think you've still got to see the best of them. You know, I think Leo's still got a lot more to come. I think Josh has. Um, so it makes sense, that fight. I'd love that fight. The Leeds fans in New York and Vegas, what's what's going to happen there? Fucking hell, what could happen there? Couldn't you get that mob over there? I don't know, I'm, I'm Never mind still, the mob, you! I'm still getting over Berlin, you know. But uh, I think it'd be fantastic, it'd be fantastic for us. Fantastic for the fans, you know. Um, and it'll be a, an absolute spectacle if we could get Maxi Hughes on the same bill, won't it? Well, let's go on Maxi Hughes then. I mean, Maxi's been, I think I spoke to Maxi two or three times in the interviews and he's mentioned um, the Devin Haney fight. When I done my interview with uh, Maxie, you jumped in and says he will beat Devin Haney. I mean, you see Maxie in the gym every day, you've seen him become IBO world champion, British champion, all this sort of stuff. What gives you that confidence then that he can beat Devin Haney, who is 
right now undefeated, he's young, he's hungry, he's up for it. What gives you that confidence? I'll tell you what gives you that confidence. Commitment and determination that Maxi all shows now. Maxi won't allow himself to be beat. And yeah, like you said, Devon Haney is young. But he's young. Has he got that experience? Has he got the experience? People forget the uh, level of fighters that Max has been in with. You know, he's been in with some real, real quality fighters. And I honestly believe that it beats Devon Haney. And that's no disrespect to Devon Haney or his dad. I know his dad spoke very kindly of Maxi. Um, you don't see a lot of that in boxing now. But I do honestly. I will say Bill is a gentleman. I will say that. He is an absolute gentleman, you know. And I feel a little bit out of place kind of saying anything bad, you know, but I do believe that Maxi beats Devon. I really do. I mean, every time Maxi steps in the ring, he's getting better and better and better. I mean, one or two people have made comment about the IBO world. It is it's a genuine world title, you know. You saw what that kid did to James Tennyson. You know, but Maxi went in there, did what he had to do, he dealt with it. So I really do not think, I mean, anybody who thinks that Devon Haney or any others at Lightweight are going to walk through Maxi. Massive, massive shock, you know. I think you're going to have a keen eye on that Jojo Diaz fight uh, on the 4th of December. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? We would absolutely, genuinely, fight any at Lightweights. Any of them, you know. I mean, that's a big statement because there's some quality in there, isn't there? And there's some real quality. Ryan Garcia, Teofimo Lopez, and Giovanni Davis can fluctuate. He can come down to lightweight. I mean, lightweight division is, is on fire right now. Jojo Diaz himself is a quality lightweight. Absolutely, absolutely. But I firmly believe that Max Hill's got the tools to be um, to be with. I, I, I feel that it belongs at that level. And I feel, feel that it belongs in with that quality of fighter. You know, don't forget every time Max Hill steps in the ring, he's not supposed to win. But there we go, all we need to do is look back over his uh, his last uh, few performances, you know, and he's just getting better and better and better. It's, it's crazy that because he, Max is always the underdog, even though he's won all these titles now. It's, it's crazy to think, and even now that he has got the IBO World Champion, when he does step into that world scene with the Haney's, the Teal theme, he'll still be the underdog. Yeah, oh yeah, of course he will. It's, you know, we've seen that before. Same as other, me other lad, Josh, always underdog. But what I'll say to him, anybody out there that's... Uh, thinking that Max Hughes is not a genuine or eligible world champion. Why not come and get an easy fight? Come and pick a few quid up. If it's easy work, come and get it. Come and earn yourself a few quid. Fight Max Hughes. There we go, that says it all, you know, see what response we get. Definitely. Uh, before I let you go, because I think Jack's getting warmed up, I'm sure you want to go and see uh, Jack Bateson fight for that English title. One, a quick word on Jack then, and the, the, obviously uh, another fighter from Leeds. Yeah, listen, it's been a good night tonight. They're always a good night down here, aren't they? Mm. It's popular, it's been running I don't know how many years now. Culminating in uh, Max on lad Jack fighting for an English title at Ellen Road. Well, I mean, Max's been putting shows on here for I don't know how long, but uh, what a night it'll be for him, his first big title, first major title. And I'm looking forward to it. Definitely. Well, Sean, go and enjoy it. And listen, it's always a pleasure to speak to you, big man. I still need to get that invitation to you your house for some dinner because Lee Eaton seems to be getting it and I don't. Lee Eaton. I don't even, don't even start me on about Lee Eaton. Honestly. And I don't want to say any more about him. Man's a disgrace. <laughs> That's the perfect way to end this interview then. Just... <laughs>